Startup companies all have at least one common primary goal, to disrupt traditional business processes with their innovative technologies to provide better, cheaper, and more effective products. The internet is the primary infrastructure for delivery of this disruption across all sectors, such as banking, publishing, education, and distribution. Many incumbent companies have lost their leadership by failing to innovate and offer new products and services to the markets. Just look at the disastrous result when Kodak failed to adapt to digital image technologies for taking pictures. My name is Jim Connor. Welcome to Game Changer Silicon Valley. This segment of tonight's show will look into the emerging story of the new corporate investor, where entrepreneurs are finding a welcome mat to develop, partner, and deploy cool new products. My guest is Jay Onda, Director of Strategic Investments at Yamaha Motors Venture and Laboratory, Silicon Valley. Jay, welcome to the show. Let's start with an overview of how Yamaha Motors decided to open an innovation lab here in Silicon Valley. Sure. So Silicon Valley is obviously the, the center of the startup ecosystem and the center of innovation. And there's lots of corporates around the world coming here to look for innovation, look for new methodologies, business models, or what have you. Traditionally, Yamaha has been a, a hardware company. Right? We have motorcycles and boats. We have various types of vehicles. But uh, now, you know, as we heard many times, software is eating the world. Uh, this is the first time in the auto industry, especially, that things are changing, not evolutionary, but revolutionary with the connected vehicles, connected cities, smart mobility. And so Yamaha realized that they needed to um, expand their vision and look for new opportunities to stay relevant, right? No longer is a motorcycle a motorcycle, but there is connected information and personalization that's happening. But it's also around safety as well. And, and so, you know, what can, we, what can we add from the technology innovation side to continue to deliver excellence with our products? Mm -hmm. So these are the reasons why we're, we're here in Silicon Valley, uh, investing and in bringing innovation, internal innovation, out to the public market as well. So you're... Um Virtually all the corporate innovation offices are relatively new, two to three years. Maybe in town, a few others have been around, but many of the offices are relatively recent. Um, I want to ask you a couple thoughts about that. Was this a, um, something like you led the, led the mission to make the case, or did it come from the board of directors, or did it come from some outside influence? I just want to ask you how that got started, sure. how long it took to progress to a decision. So our, our group was started by Hiro Saijo. He's been with the company for 20 years. Uh, about a year and a half ago, he came down to Silicon Valley to explore the innovation ecosystem. He brought it back to headquarters, to the managing committee, explained what was going on, and there was a disconnect from the world they live in and how the world is working in today's time, especially in Silicon Valley. So that green-lighted this project. Um, I actually came not from Yamaha, but from a different corporate venture group. And uh, along with me, we have two other colleagues that were external hires. And the reason why is because we've been part of this ecosystem. We understand the corporate responsibilities of being a player in the venture, venture ecosystem as well as the startup ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So we bring a new perspective and, and a different way to look at things. And uh, this is why we decided to join Yamaha. So it's unusual that a, if I can make, use the word an outsider, was brought in to run this because I have the perception, it may be wrong, that what most corporations want is somebody who knows their business units quite well and has re relationships with those units to come in, look at technology, look at innovation, and then bring it back and have a, what we'll call a, um, a trustful sure. relationship or a yes. trustful discussion. How did you overcome that, or have you overcome that barrier? <laughs> <laughs> sure, um, so Yamaha isn't, uh, isn't new in the innovation game. They've been you know, continually innovating around new products, new types of vehicles. So they understand you know, the, the strategy behind it. Within corporate innovation, I think the only way that really works is if you have top level executive approval and their support, and as well as the various business units. So uh, I saw that as the, one of the, the opportunities within Yamaha is that we did have approval and that there are business units that are looking to collaborate with external parties. Mm -hmm. And so for us, uh, Hiro Saijo, again, is uh, the insider and we're the outsider. So he bridges that communication and we have access to various business units to, to discuss, to collaborate on ideas. Mm -hmm. That's great. So I am really fascinated with this concept that uh, for, uh, for, uh, for a number of reasons. A, many companies in Silicon Valley uh, hear the um, mantra that you have to have a projection that you're going to be a 100 million revenue company in five years. We've all heard that sure. endlessly, it's overused. I have the impression that 
the corporate investors are looking for just great innovative technology. They'll take care of the distribution. Sure. Yeah, they're looking for the next really uh, breakthrough, if you will, in the sector that they're in today, or perhaps the bigger picture of where they're going with personal transportation. So what I'm getting to is how much do you have to take this th the thought process to the business units and how much do they come to you with uh, asking, go find something for us. Sure. So uh, the way we're looking at investments, we broke it down into three different categories. Uh, first one is strategic, which is a direct line of some kind of relationship that we could build collaboratively as a project or a product. Uh, the second category is exploratory. And this is with new business models, new types of um, vehicle innovations, whatever it may be. And so these are a little bit risky for uh, a company like ours to just jump in straight on. So working with a startup company who's passionate, who understands the market, or at least has a vision to create this market, is people we want to work with. And we have the technology to support them. And so there's a, there's a uh, potential level of collaboration there. And the third qual uh, category is the innovation space. And these are you know, core technologies, IP that came out of university, something that's really interesting maybe three, five, ten years down the line. But know that there is potential synergies with what we're going to do uh, in our future. And so for them too, we could be a resource for them to understand the market, to validate their product. Mm -hmm. And so th with those three lenses, we evaluate those companies uh, in whatever sector and uh, look at ways to strategically build a partnership. In the process of building a partnership, uh, most corporations like to build partnerships for a two-way street, technology, information, test market, what have you, and even talent for that matter. Um, do you, does Yamaha Motors uh, get involved in the funding also, or is that a different segment? We modeled our group around the center of excellence model. And so we have internal innovation, and so we're looking to bring our innovation and innovative products out to the market, and we're working on external innovation. So as a director of strategic investments, I work with the external parties looking for new types of opportunities to bring in-house and to, mm -hmm. to connect the dots together. So if I'm a startup company and uh, I happen to come across some cool technology you guys own that your company owns, either IP-wise or something working, I go, I'd love to have that. Sure. I could come to you and potentially license that from you. Is oh, that absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Right. So partially it's a business development role, mm -hmm. but uh, we're looking for more of a deeper relationship. So as an example, we have an FAA approved unmanned helicopter and it's about three meters long and it's used in the agriculture industry. So mm -hmm. it picks up a payload of about 65 pounds for pesticide spraying and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so we have this technology, we have the FAA approval, but what we don't have yet is the service and the business around it, right? It's hard to attack all the different types of agritech industries. So we're looking for partnerships in that space. So we could collaboratively build a new opportunity and create these win-wins. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you have a number of opportunities both ways, going, uh, technology coming out, but uh, of course technology coming in or innovators coming in. How do you uh, reach out to the market? I met you at a conference. I know you travel quite a bit. Is going to conferences and making the personal relationships the primary way, or are you holding an open house? Or what, how do people follow up with you? Sure. So we're about four months old right now. So we're still building the strategy and vision. And of course, internally, there's a lot of learnings to be done, right? To work with our internal teams to explain how we could work together. So as we ramp up, we're going to have these successful use cases, maybe some not so successful, but uh, we are the front door to, the, to access Yamaha Motors. And so much like other corporate innovation groups, we act as kind of, not the gatekeeper, but the front door. So you, you know, if you could find us and you have a great idea, um, you know, our website still needs a little bit of work, but our contact information is there and we're great, you know, we're always happy to meet with companies and see what, what happens, right? We have to explore through these conversations. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times the startups are really hungry to strike a deal now and sometimes it's just about timing. But to have this initial connection, sometimes it might be three months, sometimes six months, but something might trigger it saying, oh, I met this company. They, was, they were great, they were awesome, I love what they were doing. Maybe right now is the time to re-engage and have this mm -hmm. conversation. So this is building a longer term relationship and perspective on the market. Um, that's interesting. I, um, I, I uh, have spoken to some M&A buyers, the corporate side buyers, and they more or less have given me the impression, and we've had uh, some shows that are coming out on this, that Entrepreneurs should plan about a year of a relationship build, sure. about a year. And that gives both sides a, the opportunity to evaluate and understand the values, the operations, and do you live by what you say and so on like that, and get a feel for that each party's commitment. And um, I, I have the impression this may be also the same thing on your side of the corporate partnering. Too. Right. Is that um, right. You know, corporates have that negative bias that we're slow moving, or hardly you know, slow to execute. And so, you know, to 
we have to look at it from two different lenses, right? From the investment side, we look at it as a good investment opportunity, good strategic potential, uh, different ways we do the diligence mm -hmm. process. Um, from a business development side or partnership side, we also, it's again, kind of a timing based thing. But uh, every quarter, every year, we have new initiatives. So that drives the segments or the type of verticals that we're attacking. And so from there, you know, we'll reach out to our VC network, to the startup ecosystem, mm -hmm. to see the who's who, right? And because we're stage agnostic, it could be an early stage startup with two people in their garage to something a little bit more established, maybe later stage, uh, ready to go IPO, or even a public company, mm -hmm. right? So we're not just working with startups, but we're looking to be a open player and a partner for just building out this ecosystem. Yeah. Now some of the uh, innovation, corporate innovation offices are, are building out an accelerator of type, if you will, sure. uh, uh, innovation center, whatever you want to call that. Are, is your group doing that also, or are you just working on business deals? Right yeah. now, we're looking, again, we're, we're building out this strategy, and we have to find the right pace, the right style for mm -hmm. Yamaha. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a, you know, a playbook for corporate innovation. There are certain rules that, you know, and, and uh, good manners to follow, <laughs> right? But uh, every, com yeah. every company has its own culture. Mm -hmm. And to change that culture, to be more open, is a very, very difficult task. It's never seen on the outside. Lots of difficult conversations happen on the inside. So the yeah. more adaptive these groups are, the, the more active and aggressive we could go. Are you working at all with the universities by chance? Because there's a yeah. great deal of IP and research going on there. Yeah, so we have great connections with uh, Stanford, UC Berkeley, and MIT. And uh, we're not just in the United States. We're looking for you know, innovation around the world. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you just one last question in this area of the, of the uh, innovation office or the innovation laboratory. What are the benefits of a, uh, to a startup company uh, with your international distribution. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll let you answer that, but I have some <laughs> assumptions here. I, sure. I assume it's a big opportunity. One of the biggest values that our corporate could provide in general is the access to the customers. Maybe not direct access, but yeah. the insights, the market knowledge, the strategies of a go-to market plan. Yeah. And so we could support a company doing that. On top of that, we, we do um, uh, a lot of manufacturing as well. So we could perfect some of this hardware technology and help them understand the challenges of, of uh, building out products at scale. So we have you know, various technologies around e-bicycles, e-motorcycles, hub motors. And so with all those, the know-how of how to put it together, we could help polish some of these early stage prototype concepts. Mm -hmm. And so uh, aside from just money and access to the market, there's a lot of operational support that we can yeah. provide as well. Do you stay involved, I take it? It sounds oh, like you're, you're quite a uh, gregarious, outgoing, easygoing <laughs> guy. And we had this uh, trip at this uh, conference. People tend you had your cameras. You're, you're meeting everybody. And I assume you stay involved and you usher the companies through the various uh, processes, make sure they they, uh, they get a good hearing and they, they get a fair feedback. Yeah, I think we, we especially, we're trying to champion these startups and to get them to the right people as part of our job, right? And so it might fall on deaf ears for one group and it might not be the appropriate group, right? And so there's other business units that are looking for these types of innovations. So for us, connecting the dots internally is part of our job mm -hmm. as well. Was your other prior experience in the automotive industry or did you come from a totally different sector? I came from a totally different industry. Why don't you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I started as a graphic designer and on the startup side, right? So I was doing UI, UX, and products for about 15 years before it turned into such a unicorn role. Um, and then got into this corporate innovation work and then into corporate venturing. So earlier on on the startup side, corporates were scary. Venture capital was kind of this unknown mystery of you know, people with big checks. And uh, I didn't quite understand. So as I transitioned through the innovation and venture side, I see both sides. OK, so I wouldn't be doing a fair job here if I didn't go back and say, let me get this right, Jay. You go from graphic design to corporate investing. D designer, engineer. Designer to engineer, right. then engineer to Ooh. corporate guy. Right. I was, I was a hybrid. You, know? you were a hybrid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky that I started off my, my, my college life in computer science. OK. And then got into marketing and got into design. And I liked both, right? Oh, okay. both a similar type of mindset. You get to think outside the box and be creative, but execute on something. It's tremendous. I mean, a guy that's got a graphic design and appreciation for the, the power of design, frankly, moves into the corporate uh, environment and is able to move up into this innovation center. It's a, that's, a, I, I think, a very positive statement for Yamaha Motors' decision to have you on the team. I appreciate so, it, thank you. Yeah. Anything coming up in the next, uh, we'll say 12 months to 15 months, maybe 18 months that you see on the horizon? I, I know you can't talk about your internal <laughs> stuff, but you know, this whole idea of self-driving cars, is sure. everybody gonna adopt this? And will electric cars be ubiquitous? And what, what do you think is gonna happen here? I think so. One of the projects that we, we announced at the Tokyo Motor Show last month was a project called Motobot. 
and that's an autonomous motorcycle riding robot. And this is its first iteration. Um, it's, it shifts gears, it could ride, go to, up to about 100 kilometers an hour. And uh, the ultimate goal is to challenge Valentino Rossi on a race. Uh -huh. And so the innovation technology that has to happen to make this successful, there's so many things that we have to understand. It's not just a four-wheel car, which is very stable. It's two wheels on a very aggressive road terrain, lots of turns, lots of leaning. And so, you know, what does that mean? How do we make this a little bit more autonomous, automatic? And we bring those learnings back into the safety of the motorcycle of the future. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are looking at various e-vehicles as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we announced the car, but you know, typically two, three wheelers are our forte. Good. And so um, electric vehicles are a very interesting area for us. Well, I think, um I believe there'll probably be a number of people in our audience who want to follow up with you. Sure, so what is the best contact information for your office? Sure, my email address is j, J-A-Y, at Y-M-V-S-V. That's short for Yamaha Motor Ventures Silicon Valley. Yeah. Ventures, yeah, Silicon Valley, uh, dot com. Dot com. I am impressed with what you've accomplished, but I love the story going from the graphic, <laughs> graphic design to the engineering to the corporate investor and the innovation. That's a great story. A lot of people ask how I got in there, and it's really yeah. just luck is part of it and being open to people's feedback and new opportunities. And so mm -hmm. with a lot of startups, too, just because a corporate may not be a fit, but they want to engage with you, go dance, go explore. Well, I certainly want to keep in touch with you, your office you. and what you're doing, and I look forward to a follow-up. Uh, session perhaps bring you back on the show maybe in uh, 12 months and let's talk about some of the uh, some of the projects you put together thank so you. thanks so much for being on the show I wish you every success I going forward it. thank you very okay. much thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Game Changer Silicon Valley each week we'll address an area of innovation that may emerge as a game changer of tomorrow you can follow us on our website gamechangers.tv our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel we look forward to your continued interest and participation in the upcoming shows. Yeah.